All right, next up for us, we're going to be taking a look at finding equations of ellipses if we know certain graphical aspects of the ellipse. So in our first example, a little more basic example than our second one, uh, we're going to determine the equation of the ellipse with vertices at negative 2, 3, and 12, 3, and co-vertices at 5, 6, and 5, 0. Now, first thing that I'd like to do, since we've been given graphical aspects of it, I think it would probably be to our benefit if we were to actually talk about what the graph of those graphical aspects looks like. So what we'll do is we'll kind of eyeball this. Actually, you know what? No, we're not going to eyeball it. We're going to be super precise. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, way out there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then over here in the negative direction, negative 1, negative 2. So here we have a 12. A negative 2 goes up to 6. So the vertices that we have are at negative 2, 3. 3 is right up here. So negative 2, 3 would be this point right here. We'll mark it with a V for vertex. And then we'll do 12, 3 all the way over here at right about there. And that would be our, our other vertex. Now the co-vertices are at 5, 0 and 5, 6. So let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here's 5 right here. So we'll have a co-vertex right here at 5, 0. We'll have another covertex right here at 5, 6. So we'll use CV for covertex. Now at this point you probably get a pretty decent idea of what this ellipse is actually going to look like since we have those four key points. Oh boy, I missed by a lot. That's what I get for not being able to see through my hand as I'm drawing. And now we officially have a lemon. Oh well, a lemon is basically an ellipse. That's fine. Now, the three things that are going to lead to success on any ellipse problem, really any conic section problem, is knowing what is the center, what is the orientation, and what are the key distances. Now, in order to come up with the equation of an ellipse, the two key distances that we're going to need are going to be A and B. And once we have the center, the orientation, and A and B, we are all set. That's all that we need. So let's start with the center. Now the center should be a point that is both on the minor axis, as I'm drawing right now, and it should also be a point on the major axis, which I'm drawing right now. Now this means that for the center, it should have the same y-coordinate as these two vertices and the same x-coordinate as these two co-vertices. Now when we look at those, the co-vertices have x-coordinates of 5, and the vertices have y-coordinates of 3. Now that is a pretty strong indicator to me that the center is going to be at the ordered pair 5, 3, but there is another way to make sure, which is to use the midpoint formula. So for the midpoint formula, we can find either the midpoint of the two vertices or the midpoint of the co-vertices, and in either case, it should give us that center that we're looking for. If we were to use the vertices, then we would take the two x-coordinates and find their average. Their average we get by adding them together and dividing by 2. And we do the same thing for the y-coordinates. However, I already know that the average of 3 and 3 is going to be 3. Now if we do negative 2 plus 12, that will give us 10. 10 over 2 is equal to 5. So this indicates that the center should be at 5, 3. If we had used the co-vertices instead, and on their midpoint, we'd be taking the average of the x-coordinates, 5 and 5, and the average of the y-coordinates, which are 6 and 0. Now, once again, if we simplify both of these, the average of 5 and 5 is going to be 5, and the average of 6 and 0 is going to be 6 over 2, which reduces down to 3. You don't have to do it both ways, but it is nice to have the verification that we did it correctly by doing it more than once. So our center, which we're referring to as HK, is going to be the ordered pair 5, 3. Now this means that eventually once we get down to an equation, it means that the two things that we're going to see in the equation associated with the x and y coordinates are going to be an x minus 5 and a y minus 3, as is typical once we find that key point at the, uh, at the center. Now as far as the orientation is concerned, there are only two kinds of ellipses horizontal major axis or vertical major axis. In this case, we can see that the horizontal axis is considerably longer than the vertical axis is. 
Now, the other way that we could verify that fact is to actually calculate the values of A and B, but we'll worry about that in a sec. So the orientation we're going to point out is a horizontal major axis. We'll use capital MA for major axis. Now, this also means that in identifying the values A and B, that's going to be the distance from the center to a vertex, and B, that'll be the distance from the center to a covertex. Now, with those things in mind, we have our center. It's at 5, 3. For the value of A, we need only the difference in the two x coordinates. We don't need to apply the distance formula since they are on the same horizontal line. So we'll take the vertex over here at 12, 3, and we'll subtract the x coordinate from the center, which is at 5, 3. So for the A value, we'll simply be doing, uh, what I say, 12 minus 5, that'll be 7. For the B value, we can do the same thing, but this time we'll do it with the Y coordinates. So as far as Y coordinates are concerned, we'll take the top covertex, which is at 5, 6, and then we'll uh, subtract the Y coordinate for the center. So that'll be 6 minus 3, and we'll get 3. So B is 3. Now putting this all together and putting it into standard form for the ellipse, ST for standard form, Oh, God, I forgot how to make an M for a sec. So standard form for the ellipse should look like something over A squared plus something over B squared is equal to 1. And the things that are on top are going to be the um, variables that are associated with that particular distance. A is horizontal, so we put our horizontal variable up top. That'll be our x minus h, quantity squared. B is our vertical distance, so we'll put the vertical variable up there. That'll be y minus k. And then we'll simply substitute in all the things. So we already said that that numerator should look like x minus 5, quantity squared. Our a value is 7. Into the denominator, we need 7 squared. 7 squared would be 49. For the y, we'll have y minus 3 over b squared. Well, b is 3, so b squared would be 3 times 3, that's 9. Here is the standard form of the equation of this ellipse. x minus 5 quantity squared over 49 plus y minus 3 quantity squared over 9 is equal to 1. So, decent looking example for a horizontal major axis. Let's bump up the difficulty just a little bit by giving you different graphical aspects. This time we're going to determine the equation of the ellipse with two vertices and then two foci that are given to us. Now once again, we're given a bunch of graphical aspects, so I'd like to start by having us graph all the graphical aspects. You'll notice that all of the x-coordinates and y-coordinates are all positive, which is why I'm drawing my Cartesian plane with an emphasis on quadrant number one, where x and y are both positive. Here's one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, please fit, please fit, okay, good. Nine, seven, five, three, one, good. So we have vertices at four, nine. Four, nine is way up top here, B, for vertex, and four, one, all the way down here at the bottom. B. We also have foci, or foci, at four, seven, F, and at four, three. Now, without the covertices, it's going to be more difficult to figure out exactly what this is going to look like. So I'm just going to eyeball what this thing looks like approximately. I don't know if this is exactly right, but we want to see vertices on the outside, foci on the inside, and then covertices will be, you know, somewhere left and right of the center in this case. Now, once again, like we said for the last one, if we can determine what is the center, what is the orientation, and what are the distances? Then we are PG Keen. We'll start with the center, and we'll apply the same logic as what we used on the last one. We can take the midpoint of the vertices, or we can take the midpoint of the foci, and that should give us our center. If we use the vertices, then we'll be taking the average of 4 and 4 for the x-coordinate, 
and we'll be taking the average of 9 and 1 for the y coordinate. And that'll be uh, average of 4 and 4 is 4. The average of 9 and 1 is 5, according to our calculations. If we did the foci, then we would once again be taking the average of 4 and 4 for the x coordinate, and this time we'd be taking the average of 7 and 3 for the y coordinate. Now, like I said on the previous example, it's not necessary to do it twice, but it is really nice to have that verification that you're getting nice consistent results both ways. So with the center at 4, 5, once again, we can point out that this means that when we come up with our actual equation, we're going to see an x minus 4, and we're going to see a y minus 5 as part of the final answer. Next up, as far as the orientation is concerned, the vertices, the foci, and the whoop, center all appear on the same vertical line. That indicates that the orientation is that we are dealing with a vertical major axis. It means that the a value will be associated with the y variable, and the b value will be associated with the x variable. As far as distances are concerned, we only need a and b to come up with the equation. However, because we have foci involved, C is going to be involved as well. Now, as we did for our previous problem, A can be calculated as the distance from the vertex to the center. That's either vertex, but we're going to go with the top one. So the top Y coordinate is 9, and for the center, that is 5. So we're going to come up with an A value of 4. B value, we don't know because we don't know where the covertices are, so we'll leave that alone for the time being. However, we do have access to C. C is the distance from a focus to the center. And in this case, we'll take the top focus, which is 7, or the Y coordinate is 7, and subtract the Y coordinate for the uh, center. That will give us 2 for the C value. To calculate our value of b, we can use the old Pythagorean theorem for that one, introduced in a previous video. So we'll take 4 squared and say that's equal to b squared plus 2 squared. Simplify each of these squares, we get 16, b squared plus 4. We subtract 4 from both sides of the equation, and we technically have all of the information that we need regarding b in the form of b squared is equal to 12. Now, if we wanted to get super precise about it, that means that b is equal to the square root of 12. Or when simplified, we can factor the 12 into a 4 and a 3. 4 has a nice square root. 3 does not. Now, the only reason that we would need a b value is if we were actually asked to find the precise location of the two covertices. Then we could take our x coordinate from the center, which is 4. We could do plus or minus 2 square roots of 3 and that would take us to our two covertices. However, for the equation, we really only need the value of b squared. For the vertical major axis, we start this one the same way that we started the last one. It'll be something squared over a squared plus something squared over b squared is equal to 1. Because it's a vertical major axis, the a value is associated with a vertical distance. Excuse me. Vertical distance which is why y is going to go above the a. Uh, generally, we say that it's y minus k, but we know what that's going to look like from back up here, which is totally on the screen, and we can totally read it right now. The b value is a horizontal distance, and therefore associated with x, so we'll see an x minus h quantity squared associated with that. With that in mind, y minus k is actually going to be y minus 5, so this will be y minus 5, quantity squared, over a squared. a is 4, therefore a is 4 times 4, or excuse me, a squared is 4 times 4, for 16. b squared we calculated right here. We could just call it 12, no reason to square it, no reason to square root it, we'll just keep it as is. It'll be x minus 4, quantity squared, that'll be equal to 1. This is the standard form of the equation of the ellipse in question.